When you're sleeping in a vehicle, it's hard not to look like you didn't just sleep in your vehicle. <laughs> and if you're like me, you may want to or need to look a little bit more put together for normal life. I'll show you some of the things that I've learned that may be helpful in this video. Obviously, there are those days when it doesn't matter what you look like and you can just hang around in your sweats all day. I have those days too. So don't be feeling self-conscious if you do look like you just slept in your van. <laughs> uh, happens to all of us. So I'm not saying that you always have to look your best. But what I am saying is that I think there are ways to dress that don't tip others off that you are sleeping in your van. And at the end of this video, I have a little fashion show of sorts to show you from the items that I have in my wardrobe to see how I put together my outfits. So if you're looking for some practical ideas about what to do, I'm giving you my five best tips. Tip number one, no rip tears or wrinkles. It easily and instantly elevates your look if what you're wearing doesn't have wrinkles in it or isn't torn or very worn. I am just in a basic black t-shirt and black jeans. It's casual and it is very comfortable for me to wear, but if I were to go into a store, I still look like I am a little bit put together. All I have to do is grab my bag and some nice shoes or sandals or something, and I don't look like I am just coming out of a van. And that way, even if there are sweatpants or something or a sweatshirt, with a few little things, they can be dressed up or down and it doesn't take a lot of effort. And my favorite fabrics are merino wool. Like this is not cotton, it is actually a light merino wool fabric. They can be expensive, but they last very long. And for me, it's worth it because they last longer between washes as well because they are moisture wicking, so they don't smell as much. And you have to try it to believe it, but it's true. And it doesn't get as wrinkled as cotton does when it is rolled up or folded somewhere. I'll leave a few Amazon links that I have. And even though it's costly, to me, it is well worth it because of what it does. And you only need a few of them and they will last you way longer than your uh, cotton alternatives. I also like viscose rayon, which is a very light fabric. A lot of my blouses are made from that. And then for my pants, a lot of times they will be the lyocell blends that tend to be a lighter fabric and also are moisture wicking to an extent and you can be yeah, pretty fresh in them all day. An exception to that are jeans, of course. I have the, a dark pair of jeans and these black ones and they can last pretty well between washes as well. So those are kind of what I go for in terms of fabrics. Tip number two, versatile shoes. Having good shoes that aren't worn out and are comfortable is very important. It's a way to easily change the way your outfit looks. Even for instance, if I am just wearing what I'm wearing, this outfit can look different if I have boots on or if I have sandals on or if I have tennis shoes on. So that is a way to really get a lot out of one outfit and also change it up depending on what you're doing for the day. And you know that my shoes have to serve at least double duty. So they not only have to be decent, but they have to be comfortable because I'm not going to have any high heels or anything like that that are going to be uncomfortable for me to wear for walking, whether I'm walking around town somewhere or if I'm hiking, not that all my shoes have to be hiking shoes, but they either have to be useful for hiking or walking and also look good 
and be useful for another function. And if you get shoes that are basic and pretty neutral, they can go with all of your different outfits. So I go for either black or tan or brown colors that go with all of my neutral colors in my wardrobe. Tip number three is versatile outerwear. So my coats are a way to really layer it up and be able to wear a lot of outfits in different seasons. I really change up my outfits most by those kinds of things. So I will have a basic layer underneath and then one on top and then I can have sweaters or coats that make the outfit change. I take my layers off in the summertime and I put them on in the wintertime. So that allows me with a very few items be able to do a lot and have my wardrobe going all uh, in all seasons basically. Even for winter you've all seen me with my vest so I can put a lighter jacket under that and have that over in the fall but in the winter I can put my winter jacket on underneath and put that over it and it's warmer. I have my overalls as well that really layer me up in the winter. That was a game changer for me when I got those overalls for winter because that just kept me way warm, a great layer to have if it's very, very cold out. But otherwise those just shove up and back there and I can just wear the other jackets depending on the weather. And that has worked really well for me, actually surprisingly well. And that was something I really thought about because I do have my entire wardrobe in here. So I had to think about how I could do that in ways that make sense. And that works pretty well. The added advantage of the layering and the light jackets that I have is that they store very well. So I'll show you what those look like. They're just in a bin and because they're thinner fabrics and don't wrinkle, they just all line up really well. I have probably eight in one little bin and I can wear them with whatever I need to wear. Tip number four is the 80-20 rule. And that is that they are 80% solids and 20% prints and things that may be a pop color or something like that. So even if your wardrobe is more colorful than mine. Mine is a lot of blacks and grays and beiges. I do have a few like reds or I don't even know what the color is, uh, mauve maybe, but uh, things that just have a little more color in them. But if you go with the 80-20 rule, if no matter what your colors are, they'll be able to mix and match with each other and then you can throw in the little pop color whenever you want to and it works very well so that you can change things up without a lot of different pieces in your wardrobe. The added advantage is that it can come in very handy when you are basically dressing sometimes in semi-darkness even though you may have a flashlight on your head or your lights turned on. It can sometimes be difficult <laughs> until you have full sun to know what you just put on. So for me, as long as I know that most of my things match, I can get dressed in the dark practically, and I will know that I have put together something that doesn't look too crazy. Tip number five is that they need to fit. And by that, I mean they need to not only fit me comfortably, but they need to fit this lifestyle. It is crazy, but once you get to the point where you only keep the things that you actually wear, you'll see how easy it is because you know that you will feel good, you'll look good, and you don't have to think much about what you put on because you're not trying to fit into a pair of jeans that you wore when you were 20. And so it's very freeing and it makes my life easier and it makes this lifestyle easier to live. So I actually only keep the things that fit me well and that I feel good in and that I'm comfortable in and I get rid of those things that don't. And to point number one, I also get rid of those things that have any 
wear and tear to them or are ripped in any way or that I find that every time I pull them out, they look wrinkled and they just don't make me feel good. And if that feels daunting to you, I have a few questions that I always ask myself when I am looking at clothes or if I'm needing to change up my wardrobe in any way. My first question is always, is it my style and will it go with at least two other items that I already have in my wardrobe? If it's not my style, which I don't know if I have a style, but if it's not something that I feel good in, then I just won't get it. And if it doesn't go with anything else in my wardrobe already, then I also just am like, why, why then? I, I shouldn't get it. The second question is, is it in the color palette that I already have? Again, mine is pretty boring, but that goes for any color palette that you seem to be drawn to and you like to wear or looks good on you or you feel good in. If it does not fit that color scheme already, unless it's one of the pop colors, I won't get it. And if that color then doesn't mix and match with the other colors that are already there. The next question I ask is, does it look good on me now? Because I just don't have the room for carrying around things that I am not going to wear. So if it isn't something that I can blindly just pick up and know will look good on me, I also don't have a full length mirror. So I want to know that when I put it on, I know it probably looks halfway decent, even though I can't check myself out <laughs> in a mirror. Uh, I sometimes use my side of my van to see what I look like. But for the most part, I know that things fit and they look decent on me or I feel comfortable at least that they I feel good in them. Uh, so that is something that you will definitely want to uh, check out. Having said that, there are even still some things that I tend to keep around longer than I should because I love them and I have used them well in the past. But really I don't have room and so if they're not serving me anymore it's best to either hand them along to somebody else or uh, just yeah get rid of them in some way. And the last question I ask myself is is it easy to care for because that goes to my point of if it's a fabric that's going to get wrinkly all the time or is dry clean only can't be hand washed and hung up to dry then I will probably not get it. It's just not worth it. And that makes choices easier because I already know what I'm going to go for and what works really well. And so that might be helpful to you to keep in mind as well. And even though I am somewhat of a minimalist, you'd be surprised by how much I actually have. I did a poll and you all radically underestimated the amount of items that I have in my wardrobe. So it's very funny. I think you'll be surprised. I think I'm more like a capsule wardrobe. I don't even know what they're called, but everything that I wear is in my van. And so it is my rolling wardrobe, if you will. And I will show you in a little bit some of the things that I wear and how I put them together. And I will list the outfits that I have and I think you will be a little bit shocked by how much can actually fit in here. I have 10 pair of pants, 12 tops, uh, some with no sleeves, short sleeves and long sleeves. One of my pair of pants turns into shorts and then I have another pair of shorts. 10 pieces of outerwear which includes the sweaters, jackets, white jackets, a winter coat, winter vest, and the winter overalls. Two base layers, long sleeved shirt and bottoms that are for winter. Three little bralettes and seven pair of underwear. Seven pair of merino wool socks. And Interestingly enough, I have 10 pair of shoes in my van. I keep them under my passenger area over here and under the driver's seat. Those are the places that I keep them and I will show you how that works. So I hope you have found this helpful and that you have gotten some ideas of how you can dress for van life. If you have any ideas that have worked for you, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. This would be one of those topics that would be very interesting to see how you've worked it out if you have some tips for people. 
As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.